So some things happened yesterday, and we ended up uh, with a little bit of a situation. We were able to work it out, but it was a little stressful and goes with the territory with regards to taking our A2 down. So we want to share that with you. Uh, essentially though, we don't have any video of it because we were all really busy dealing with the situation. But it was a good learning experience. Together. Welcome to our All Together Passage Series, a daily vlog taking you with us on our maiden voyage from France to Miami. We're on leg three to Miami. So it's morning and we waited for the sun to come up a little bit to reef. It was getting a little lively and um, we did our first unsupervised downwind reef. Nikki would be proud. We're getting pushed towards the shore, so we might have to jibe in a little bit. But it's a relatively nice morning. Got a little wet, it's raining. Um, there's been some squalls, which is good because the boat got washed off. Um, but we're making good headway, probably going 10, 11 knots most of the night with some um, higher speeds kind of as we got the wind bursts and gusts. So we've got the Genoa and the main with one reef. We were set seeing 27 knot gusts at one point. But anyway, we put the reef in and literally five minutes later, the wind died. But we have more wind now. Our true wind's 20. Our wind angle's about 154, 153. And we're going through the old Bahama Channel. Oh, look, flying fish. Gets us into at some point, the Gulf Stream. We have about a day to go, and uh, we're just sort of in this channel avoiding some of the ships. I can see them on the horizon. There's a sailboat out there, but a cruise ship further down.
what sailing at between 15 and 17 knots looks like. That's probably, what's that? That's uh, 16 knots. Just had a boost. So we're going 17 knots. Um, Amy's killing it over here. <laughs> In the captain's chair. It's a bit funny because it's almost like playing a video game. Yeah. I have my hand on the remote. Yeah. And I'm coming up or down to try to keep the little circle, which is our wind speed and angle. Oh, and that's a good way to do it. In the pink um, area, which is the code 65, which is what we're sailing. So it can come out a bit like this, but if it comes out too far, then I'm adjusting our um, angle to the wind. So like right now, I came down a bit, and then it'll get, it'll get back in our zone. So it's video game that's sailing. A, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> it's a bit surreal. I've never done video game sailing before. <laughs> yeah, and now, now I need to come back up. So we're trying to uh, stay out of the, the hot pink zone of the traffic separation scheme. That's the middle and we don't want to be in the middle or on the wrong side. So we're trying to stay as high as we can. It's a little bit tricky with the wind speed and angle. So yeah, high maintenance sailing here. <laughs> it's awesome. But easy, I mean, yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm sheltered, I have a remote, so I don't have to reach all the way over here. Yeah. <laughs> That's too far. <laughs> and this has been the wind situation. So we've seen, uh, looks like, tw gusts of 27. And we still have the Code 65 and the main with one reef. How do you like the Code 65? I love the Code 65. Um, it's got this great furler, which I really like. A lot of times the head sails have like a dinky plastic furler on the bottom and this one's like kind of hardy looking and it's um, got this case to help protect it because they do get banged up quite a bit and yeah it's an easy gorgeous nice sail I really like it Amy and I both agree we like big sails that, that furl yes yeah <laughs> no socks <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try to summarize what happened last night with the A2. So, the winds were really variable and we had a full main and we had the A2 up. Sometimes it was fine and sometimes it was, the wind speed was quite high. Um, and it was still daylight. And what it appeared to be is that the conditions were going to stay the same. We were also sort of in a wind shift uh, where the Code 65 would have been more favorable at some point. I think we just wanted to go with the A2 a, bit, a little bit longer uh, before we put the Code 65 up. But ultimately, we decided to take the A2 down. And we have it rigged so that we use the winch on the bow to help winch it down. Um, someone's there obviously watching it and, and watching the line. But the winch is sort of um, not pointing in the right direction to tail, number one. So we'll have to fix that. The second thing is um, I was up there tailing the line with my hand and then with the other hand I have to push the winch button. And so I only have one hand to pull the winch line or to make sure the winch line is clear. And it's that little polyester line, it's not perfect uh, for the job. It's just we, how we currently have it set up. So again, we're still learning our boat and learning what we want to change about it um, in the sail plan. So in any event, the line got an override on it. Is that what you call it? An override? Yeah. Yep. The line got an override and I had to stop, but it was like halfway down. 
So Stefan came up, he grabbed the, the line to pull it down, but of course he couldn't pull it down because it was caught, because it's a, it's a single line, it's like a loop system. Um, so he held it while I sort of unfouled the, the line on the winch. So that was all fine, we got it down. But then what happened is the sheet, the lazy sheet, blew free and went under the boat. And um, what appeared to happen is the line was just stuck over the boat and we had no idea what it was caught on. Uh, was it the skeg? Was it the rudder? Was it the dagger board? Um, so we couldn't figure it out, we couldn't pull it up. And um, we were able to get the line that was in the water off the back of the boat. And we had the line that was originally attached to the sail. But it was the middle part we couldn't figure out how to get rid of. And we didn't know if it was caught on the rudder. That was, I think, the biggest concern of mine, at least. Um, so at one point, we tried to pull up the dagger board and thinking that um, maybe it was stuck on the dagger board. And if we pulled the dagger board up, it would, it would free itself loose, which ended up basically um, jamming the dagger board um, at that at that point and so somehow we thought the line then got sucked into the dagger board opening with the board and then was caught between the board and the casing so we, we weren't really sure what to do um, until Daniel saved the day and he kind of went up to the dagger board and he was kind of moving it around um, and then Amy said well let's heave two and give ourselves just let's calm the boat down give ourselves some space we haven't we, we hope to sort of when we were doing the port light repair with the epoxy on the Atlantic trip with Nikki um, but we didn't back the the uh, the, the Genoa and because I don't think we had a Genoa up so we were just kind of staying in place but anyway so we hope to and that basically stopped the boat. Um, Daniel kind of shook the dagger board loose uh, from, from the pinched line. The line came free, and, and I think just from the boat being still, the line was able to sort of go off the dagger board and they were able to pull the line up. So that was a huge relief because I was trying to rig a GoPro system to see if we could um, determine if the line was wrapped around the rudder or not, and that would have been a much bigger problem. So we're just happy that all got resolved and we could go on with our night. It did take us a while to sort of wind down. Um, we had a nice dinner after that, and then we discovered the problem with our window. So this contraption, is a little bit of collateral damage from yesterday. The sheet got tight on the A2 and popped the window up from the outside and broke the latch. Um, the latch is flat, but the window has a bit of a lip. So somehow the sheet figured out a way to hug the lip of the window and pull it out. So right now we're keeping it shut with a bungee ball thing, some Allen colored green wannabe duct tape, and a wooden bread basket <laughs> with some um, placemats wrapped so it doesn't somehow damage the roof. So. People who do stuff break stuff. Uh, again, just we're still learning our boat and learning things also we want to fiddle with to make right. Um, that's what happens kind of when you get a brand new boat is you have to figure out exactly how you're going to operate it and how you're going to take the sails down and put them up and do it safely. So yeah, anyway, I'm so happy that we're back underway and we're making good progress. I don't know if you can fully see and appreciate how beautiful this water is, but it's just a gorgeous aqua turquoise color.
the water is still just the most gorgeous color. And that's what the Bahamas are known for. They're amazing turquoise, beautiful waters. It even smells different. It smells like tropical ocean. Definitely smells different. Statistics corner. Last 24 hours, 218 nautical miles. Max speed, 20.9. Average speed, 9.7. With a sea state that was crisscross. So not bad. We have just gone under below 200 nautical miles to go. So if we maintain the 200 nautical mile, which I think we've been clocking 200 plus every day so far, in this part two of Lake 3, we should be in Miami in less than 24 hours. Maybe, still a long way to go.